What's up everybody? How to be a master marketer. I'm here, I just got it out of the gym. Alex is trying to show me up. This is my business partner, Alex. I show up all nice and ready. He's all nice. <laughs> <laughs> but we're gonna talk about this. Here's the thing, everybody wants to make more money. I feel like a news reporter I'm sitting here. Everybody wants to make more money at the core. Are you laughing at that, Zach? Yeah, just at the core thing, the way you make more money with a business is simple. You master marketing. Like you could have the best idea. So many good ideas nobody's ever heard of. And sometimes bad ideas make up more money because they're just better at marketing. 100%. So the best thing is to make a good product and be good at marketing. Mm -hmm. So I want to show you, I have to fly out early tomorrow to the East Coast to my farm. We're here in LA. So I'm going to do talk for about 20 minutes, then I gotta go. And um, Alex will continue training you. So a little background on Alex, you wanna learn from this guy. He's, he and I have spent over $500 million marketing our own businesses on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Snapchat, TV. Uh, there's his alerts going off every time he makes money. <laughs> our businesses make money. Alex is like that dude that has a bell. Pavlov's dogs, right Alex? forgot to put it on silent. So I want, we want to go through, I want him to give you five of those inner circle tricks that he doesn't share with many people. Don't give him all the tricks, give him five. He's gonna lay out five strategies, so watch this. It's free. Um, someone said Ty Lopez is on steroids. I'm not on steroids, but thank you. I'll take that as a compliment. Um, I'm not that big. If I was on steroids, I'd be a lot bigger. We will show you, so let's say you have a service business, let's say you're a realtor, let's say you are a personal trainer, you wanna be big on social media, or you don't care about social media and you have a restaurant, you have a, you're a dentist, a doctor, you need to know still these rules, and these are the new rules of marketing, okay? And also, we got a little, uh, I'm a, we got a little thing we built that he'll talk about later. We're gonna let a few people in that wanna be in, and, uh, just we're making like a master marketing alliance for people who want to learn, like for real. So, um, does Alex have a YouTube channel? We're live in four places. What about a meal prep business for bodybuilders? It's a good idea. Dude, I know a guy that started one, something like that in California. It's making like half a million bucks a month. Okay, so we have what, four? We're live on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, probably on my website too. I can't see the Facebook comments. Can you adjust them? They're just, I don't know if you moved the thingy down. Um, Ty Lopez, I want to interview. Ty, my marketing agency is doing 40,000 a month. That's good. I got a lot of people, thousands of people, more than that, that send me testimonials of how things are, are working for them, so. We're gonna relaunch Twitter. No comments are showing up. Uh, Twitter's weird. No, I'll leave it. I think, okay. it, oh, if you don't see stars, sometimes Twitter's weird. We've got 106 there. Yeah. Just watch it. Is it showing on your Twitter? Yeah, it's, it's showing. It's probably fine. Twitter is a weird platform. Um, okay. So, first thing about marketing. This is insider technique. I'll give the first one. You can do the last four. Sounds good. So, let me pivot on my chair. Should we rip this off or flip it? We'll flip that for I'm going to get this uh a little coconut water in. I love this stuff. I should be indoor. They should pay me to drink this on camera, but they don't. <laughs> so this is an unbiased endorsement. The best coconut water I've ever drank is this one. I swear, if anybody knows who owns it, I'd love to buy that company. So I have an unlimited coconut water supply. So number one thing, uh, and, and there's a lot of number ones. It's, this isn't it's hard to know what's the number one thing, but you have to develop a ninja six cents, okay? And I'll explain what I mean by that. A six cents, basically to know what's gonna hook people. And you know, when you go fishing, you have a hook. In marketing, good marketing has a hook. And over t people are always like, hey, Ty, is this a good hook? 
is this a good video on my homepage? I'm selling, I'm drop shipping, I'm doing age, like, is this good? And I'm like, well, no, most of the time. And they go, how do you know it's not good? And I'm like, well, because I've spent, me and him spent over 500 million bucks trying stuff. Mm -hmm. And so some stuff just works and some stuff doesn't. And the quicker you develop a Ninja Six Sense, the less testing you have to do. You can get, to, you can just test your way. Like if you test a 10,000 different videos on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, you'll find one that sells your product a lot. But it takes a long time and a lot of money to test 10,000 different commercials, different ads, different you know pictures. So if you develop a Ninja Six Sense over time, you can pretty much, for me, it takes me about two or three tries on any marketing campaign to get one of them to work. Because I've been doing this a long, not just a long time, but I went into it going, how do I develop my Six Sense? So what you have to do to develop um, that Sixth Sense is uh, two things. So you develop a sixth sense by just doing it over time, like trial and error, obviously. But there's another way. It can rub off on you. And this is a process called osmosis. And this right here, pretty much, if you listen to any of my stuff, this is my secret sauce. And I'm not the most successful person in the world, but I pretty much have the life that I enjoy. And that to me is what success is. Everybody got their different standard. Some people want to run the world. They want to own the empire. Alex would like to be the richest man in the world on the Forbes list. I don't care about that. He does. I like to have a balanced life. You know, I like to feel good, healthy. I like to have wealth. I like to have friends, social life, and I like to be happy. Alex is like, forget all that. He just wants to make money. But that's fine. <laughs> There's no right or wrong. But if you can, how do I get a balanced life? What's my plan? Easy. What, who you're around rubs off on you. And it's the same with marketing. You hang around with other badass marketers, all of a sudden you start developing that sixth sense without having to only do trial and error. Because T and E, not T and A by the way, T and E. Um, if you know what T and A is. Uh, T and E, trial and error, as Richard Dawkins says in his book, The Selfish Gene, in nature, trial and error is costly and deadly because you can fail. So most people fail because they only do trial and error. But if you can get this rub off osmosis, and I, I, at 19, I, got this men, I had this mentor named Joel Salton. I'm actually flying out to see him tomorrow, believe it or not, coincidentally. Um, we were working on a, we still after my teenage years, we're still working. We started a business when I was 19 and we're, still, we're now back in business again. And with Joel, he was a good marketer. And he just started, and of course he was doing like organic eggs and organic beef because he was, had a farm. And he wanted to, his, he said his mission in life was to, to give people the gift of good food, which believe it or not, when I was 19, I was like, that's a weird, Thing, but now I realize there's so much crappy food in the world. It is Such a gift. A good one, yeah. In fact, there's no, maybe in some ways, there's no better gift than giving people good food, good water. You need shelter, food, and water. After that, everything else is negotiable. But that was his mission, and he cut out the middleman, the big, large um, food companies, and just did his marketing directly on his farm. So instead of having to have a huge farm with factory farming, he could do a small farm because he direct marketed to his customers. By the way, you should put this up on the podcast eventually, Zach. Um, so he, he just rubbed off on me. And all of a sudden, I started my first business with him at 19. Then the next year, I started another business. I went back to North Carolina, started a business. It was a success. Every year since age 19, my income has gone up, I think, every single year. I don't think I've ever gone backwards. And that's the most important thing. It's not how high of your income, how high your income is. This has been proven scientifically. You will be happier when you're moving in the right direction. So up, you don't have to go from zero to a trillion dollars, but it's better. They've done studies. If somebody makes 10 million and the next year makes 8 million, they're, they're more depressed than somebody who makes 100,000 one year and 110 the next. Isn't that crazy? Like the human brain calibrates around momentum. They actually call that, um, Oh, I forget that it's a cognitive bias. So 
you start developing the Ninja 26 cents. And what you develop around is these 25 cognitive biases. And I've been, I introduced kind of the world to these in 2015. Now, they weren't my ideas. They were kind of obscure in obscure books that nobody read. And I started talking about the 25 uh, cognitive biases and all of a sudden started making people into millionaires. Uh, it, people who took a business all of a sudden, phew, because the cognitive biases are what I mean. If you understand the cognitive biases intuitively, because it's rubbed off on you from marketing masters that you've been around, all of a sudden you develop that ninja six cents. I now, you know, me and Alex now start businesses. We have an incubator. We invest in other people. I just, if you saw the Swanee sleep glasses, just launched the new Model X actually. This is a company where I'm an investor advisor to and just different companies like this. And I gotta go in with my six cents or else you're gonna waste your time. And time is money. Okay. Oh, that's a long comment, somebody said. On Facebook? Yeah, that is, a, that is a long one. Ty, I want to interview you one day. I've been watching you for three years. So, you know, I don't know. The best way to meet me, I've got this goal this year. I made a simple goal. I want to take, to document, like a documentary of me taking 300 people from Rags to Riches. Not me personally, but like what I do, my programs. I have other people teaching, so I can't take all the credit, but I wanna see that, 300 people. So I started doing that every month. I'm inviting 20 people who are success stories. They're not actors. And we have you know, lunch here or dinner. And the, the success stories are crazy. And almost all of it comes from this osmosis thing. You just learn, man. Just, just You wanna get stronger in the gym? hang out with dudes benching 500 pounds. The next thing you know, your bench press goes up. You wanna get skinnier? Simple, start hanging out with people who have six pack. They'll shame you into eating right. Yeah. <laughs> That's what happens. <laughs> um, not actively shame you. You wanna make more money, hang out with people that making a million dollars would be embarrassing. Me and Alex, you know, at this point, um, if we, made a million dollars in a year, we would both have a heart attack in our business. Yep. So that's good for people to learn from us because we're rubbing off that mindset. Now, we got, me and Alex want to get around people who, in fact, I talked to one of my mentors today. I still have mentors. It's this guy named Richard. He's about 70 years old and he made, I can't tell, he's very humble. I'd say on the low end, he made 500 million bucks. On the high end, I think he made 2 billion, but he doesn't want to go on the Forbes list, anything like that. He just does whatever he wants and owns real estate. He's a big real estate developer. But you know, an interesting story about Richard, I've told this story before. In fact, in my TEDx talk, my TEDx talk's almost gonna hit 10 million. Really? It's at nine nice. something. I didn't even know, somebody told me. Um, he goes, when I was 16, Ty, I lived in Virginia Beach, Virginia, and I found a real estate developer. He, he stumbled on this principle of mentors and rubbing off and, and he went and spent time with this guy who at first didn't want to mentor him. He just showed up at his office. He was 16 years old. He had the summer off from school and he said, teach me. And the guy goes, no, I don't want to, you know, I'm busy. In fact, the guy wouldn't even let him in the office. The secretary kept turning him away. Finally, the secretary, he came back 17 times in a row Finally, the secretary felt so bad that he hadn't gotten a meeting with this potential mentor, real estate developer. He said, she said, just hide behind this plant at the elevator and when he comes out at 5 p.m., just jump in the elevator with him and, when you, and then he's trapped with you. When you go down, don't stalk, but when you go down, um, you'll have you know one minute to tell him your pitch. And he told him, hey, I'm young, I wanna learn from you, I'll work for free. And the guy was like, Okay, if you're serious, show up tomorrow morning at 5 a.m. at a private airport, because he had a, this older guy had a private jet, and Richard got on that jet with them, flew down to Florida, looked at a commercial real estate deal, started learning at 16, and before he was 20 years old, this is in the 70s, maybe even the 60s, he was making so much money as a teenager that his parents had an intervention because they thought that he was a drug dealer. Isn't that funny? That is funny. He said he came home, there's like a circle of people. Remember when Tony Soprano, remember when they did the, 
Who did they do that for? Christopher Maltesanto. Malt, what is it? Maltesanti? They did an intervention because he was like a drug addict. Well, this rich, Richard, they came. They all sat around. They're like, it's okay. You can tell us. They thought he was like shipping drugs or something from Colombia. But he goes, no, this is all legit. And I think he was making like $100,000 a month in the 70s. Really? Yeah, that's like that's 400 insane. grand, 500 grand a month. Yeah, because he started real estate deals and the guy also showed him how to, um, you, you know that insider trading wasn't illegal in the 70s. Really? So his, uh, yeah, he's a, the yeah, law changed the later. I, this might've been late 60s. He basically, it was still legal to do insider stock mm -hmm. trading. So this rich guy, this older rich mentor used to throw him some stock tips. He'd say, put 10 grand in this, I, I know what's gonna happen. <laughs> so he started, that's why he had to show the, tick, the ticker, the tickets. Mm -hmm. The stock, because that's when you'd use a stockbroker. So he showed his parents, here's my, I bought, bought this, this shares and it went up. You can't do that anymore. It's against the law, but it was completely legal back then. And that's another thing a mentor, but you only got to get ahead once. Once you're ahead once, he got a million bucks saved up. He invested in one piece of real estate, started buying mobile homes, uh, shopping centers, flipped it into two million with the tax law. You can do 1031 exchange, boom, he just goes. He just keeps flipping the thing, and the next thing you know, he cashes out for like, he does a REIT roll up, which is insane money. REIT roll ups are billion dollar tra tax free transactions, basically. There's a lot of tax advantages of real estate, but we get ahead of ourselves. That's just my point is like, yo, get stuff to rub off on you when it comes to marketing. You're gonna try to develop it yourself, it's gonna take you 30 years. So that's why I said, pay attention to this talk that we're doing now because. Alex is a marketing master. I'm not bad at marketing. Um, and so, yeah. Okay, SMMA is the move. So David Tink said he just took a shower. Thank you, David. Because I wasn't gonna go any further with this talk until I knew you were done with your shower. Um, Ty mentor me, Ramsey says on YouTube. Should we go to college for online marketing or get a mentor, Tavian Campbell? That's an easy answer. When people ask me, should you go to college? I have mixed, yes or no is the answer. Should you go to college for online marketing? That's a no. <laughs> I repeat, that is a freaking no. If you go drop 80 grand at some whatever dipshit college to learn. Or even the best ones. Even the best one. Yeah. Alex has a, I don't have a college degree. I dropped out. He has a PhD. And for in MBA aerodynamics, and then he went to got an MBA at Stanford, Berkeley. Berkeley, sorry, yeah. but he dropped out at the very end because he's like, "This is idiotic." And then he started a company, and the last ten years they've done a billion dollars in revenue, not bad. So my point being, and it was I've that's had an easy one. Classes, it was just not relevant even. Maya has a degree from Tulane in marketing. <laughs> really? Yeah, she came out with eighty grand in debt, and I go. She came to work for me, my cousin, and I go, Maya. Great, you got a marketing degree, what do you know? And she's like, I can't remember anything. She goes, she remembered one obscure thing, like, uh, I don't know, the marketing mix or one of these dumb textbook things. No, the way you learn about marketing is from marketers, my friend. And college professors are smart and they're good. I'm friends with Dr. David Buss, I look up to him. But he's no marketer. And oddly enough, a lot of these universities study my marketing. It's funny, I get, get, I get followers all the time. I got 1.2 million views on my Snapchat yesterday. And, yeah. and people write me, they're like, hey, my college professor is putting up your Here in My Garage YouTube video as an example of viral videos and blah, blah, blah. And so, um, no, do not go for college for the love of God, to college for that. Would you go to college to learn basketball? You want to learn from some professor that's five foot four, fat, can't even shoot a free throw? No, you go. You don't want to learn basketball. You might play in college, but you don't learn in college. You know, there's no no Duke University, Kentucky. They're not going to college. Going all right. First period is free throws. Second period is rebounding. No, you go play with basketball players. You want to learn how to play soccer, football. You go play with football players. You can, and you have coaches. So you have coaches, and most good coaches are former players. Phil Jackson got 11 rings. As a, he can't even put them all on. You know, Kobe Bryant always likes to show that he, he has six, right, Zach? No, Co he's four. Oh, no, it's oh, Jordan. Five. Jordan has six. 
So he likes to show off that he can't put them all on his hand, so he puts two. Dude, uh, Phil Jackson has 11. What? Yeah, he has 11. Uh, 12. Or is it 13? As it's 11 as a coach, two as a player. The man has 13. Wow. So he, he, he has to put them on his toes. But the point being, he was one of the greatest basketball coaches because he had done it before. He wasn't just a professor of it. And Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant benefited from being coached from Phil Jackson because he was a winner. The dude already had won. And so your mentors are people who are already winners. And I'm not saying that college professors aren't winners, but they ain't winners at marketing for sure. Come on, man. Now, there are probably a few good marketing professors out there. If you choose to go spend 40,000. What is it? Azusa Pacific is a yeah. college. We just saw a billboard. 000. It's 38,000. Plus, what's the upsell? The upsell is Diamond <laughs> Dining Club. Cafeteria food, food cafeteria. for like three, four thousand. Four thousand. Four, four, so four, if you want to spend 42, no offense to Azusa Pacific is probably going to sue me eventually for, <laughs> I just saw a billboard at LAX and I was like, what the hell is Azusa Pacific? So if you went there, you know, it's funny. I gave that talk the other day. I had, a, I gave a Definitely. seminar and there was like, I was like, who the hell goes to Sousa Pacific? One guy goes, I went to Sousa Pacific, but he agreed with me. He's like, it's a useless degree. He goes, I got a degree in like, I don't know, art history. And now he does something else. So, um, anyway, yeah, get that diploma. You have to spend 42,000 so you can get the diamond that's, cafeteria. Isn't that per year? Yeah, that's per year. So you... <laughs> People are spending so one hundred and sixty-eight thousand dollars and four years of your years, life. That's like think about that. And and, and who's the rub off osmosis? Other Asusa Pacific students who don't know shit either and spending one hundred and sixty-eight thousand. I would automatically not want to be with those people because I'd be like, you were stupid enough to pay one hundred sixty-eight thousand, so I don't want to be with you. That's like, um, what's the Groucho Mark said? He didn't want to be part of any country club yeah. that would accept him as a member. He's like, if you accept me as a member. It's kind of like Dave Chappelle when he was the black Ku Klux Klan guy. Mm -hmm. And at the end, have you ever seen that Dave Chappelle show? He's a black guy, but he does, he's blind. So he has a Ku Klux Klan thing in, and then at the end he goes, so he finds out he's black, and he was married to a white woman, and at the end it goes, and he divorced her because she would she married a black man. So that... Anyway, I should probably change the subject, but that shit's funny if you have never seen that. And that's how I feel about not just a Susan Pacific, just in general, like, hey, what common sense here. Pusham Sharma says, how can I join your test group? So Alex is going to do, basically, we're putting together, before I get off here, I'm putting, we're putting together a, a master marketing alliance. We're just going to let a test group of people in. We're going to um, do Zoom calls, which are like, kind of like FaceTime, but group mm -hmm. FaceTime in groups of 12 and just be training people and exchanging ideas. And it's like, it's like the, you know how they say you got a network? Well, now you're gonna network on your phone. So I'll, we'll put you, we're gonna let a handful of people in. Like I said, it's only gonna be groups of 12, so we're not gonna let 50,000 people in or something. Mm -hmm. If you wanna become a master marketer or you already are a master marketer, we'll have a mix. We'll have some super advanced people, some you know, medium and some beginners, and we'll mix them in the group because everybody can bring ideas no matter what stage they're at. So, and we'll have brainstorming sessions once a month. And we'll charge a little fee. It's not that expensive. We're not gonna do it. You know, I got a mastermind that's 25 to 50,000. I got consulting, people pay me 100,000 to $1 million is, is my fee. But I'm just gonna do, we're not gonna do this for that much money. We're gonna charge a little bit of money just to screen out people. But you can try it for a month. We'll put a link up. Someone said, Ty, how much did you make last year? I never say that exactly because I own private companies, so luckily I don't have to say, but put it this way. If I don't make 100 grand a day in my businesses, it'd be a very depressing day. So, you know, combined across businesses, want to make at least 100 some days. I mean, I made a million bucks in an hour before. That's like a peak time. Um, I've never been able to sustain a million an hour. But you know, I grew up with a mom that made 20,000 a year, single mom. So what I'm t showing you here, it works. I mean, nobody, it, when people try to be like, I don't think that works. I'll be like, are you telling me my life didn't exist? Like, yeah, how can you argue? That's like going up to, you know, Vin Diesel and being like, lifting weights and acting. 
will not make you any money, Vin Diesel. He's like, what do you mean? He, the man got 100 million bucks. You can't argue, that's a good thing about why I like to be around people who have results. You can't argue with results. You might not be able to get them, but somebody will. You know what I mean? So, um, oh, we put the link in there. We'll put a link in there. Alex is gonna talk more about it and stuff, but I'll yeah. put a link if you- Yeah, put the link links above, up. below, if you're on my website. If you're on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, we'll post it as a caption. And um, yeah, you can just go ahead and uh, you can join it. Now, we're gonna just limit it. And so, and this is a real thing, we're gonna limit it. So when you go into it, if it shows that it's full, then you just missed out. Okay, so you just don't call my office because sometimes people freak out like it closed. I'm like, I told you it was going to close. It's just a small group. I do everything in test groups to test everything. So can you put, put that link? Yeah, change we'll the page. The link. It's tylopez.com slash alliance. Just go there. It'll redirect you to our market, Master Marketing Alliance. It has all the rules about, you know, how, what the cost is and blah, blah, blah. It, trust me, it's reasonable. It's not, we should charge 40, if a Sousa Pacific charges 42,000 uh, a year, look, we spent more money than all of a Sousa Pacific's ever spent, probably uh, ever. 500, yeah. we're at, we're, yeah. me and Alex are In now pushing 600 sure. million, ha over half a billion dollars we've spent on our own businesses. And yes, that is a real number and it's verifiable. Alex owns Zeus, he's a co-founder and Zeus, raised what 80 mil mm -hmm. and then now makes about close to 150 million a year which they've reinvested it all in marketing campaigns to grow the business you got how many how many do you say how many members are on so well, official is 30 million plus yeah so he built a company with 30 million customers and to get that I had to spend a crap load of money on marketing mm -hmm. and remember people come back in that business so he owns and he built the number four yeah, app, top grossing app. Top Google grossing Google. app of all time. Yeah. In the app store of any app ever made, he's got the top four by money. So these are real numbers. And so, yeah. Ty, when do you think, when do you guys think Facebook ads will get significantly more expensive? V asks on YouTube. What's your thought? I think, um, especially if, you, if you, Instagram is specifically because it's growing, the whole ecosystem is still growing. So I think that has time. So supply is also growing. Yeah, more impressions. Yeah, more impressions. So more so, people are watching social media, yep. so they have to sell those video space. Yeah. So I look, everything, every window closes in about seven years. Yeah, it'll close. It'll but, close. Yeah. Instagram, something else will come. Maybe it'll be Twitch is getting big, live streams like we do. Um, so good question though, Dante Cams, what about interactive marketing? Dante, what am I doing with you right now? <laughs> Believe it or not, I'm interacting with you. <laughs> Therefore, yes, live streaming is interactive. I don't know if you're talking about VR where you like pretend you're in, you know, Zelda character or something <laughs> or like Call of Duty, but yeah, interactive is the name of the game. Ty, what strategies would you use to help restaurants do marketing? So when you're in the Alliance, here's the deal. We're gonna right. match you up with 12 other marketers. We also have a, a, a master group that we do. And so once a month you come together and every hard problem in your life, you just brainstorm it and solve the problems right there in the group. It's kind of like a platoon in the military. Like mm -hmm. I think, how many people want a platoon? So like 12 to 20? Can, can you Google it yeah. again? I yeah. should know this. Who knows how many in a platoon? It's roughly what we're gonna do. Um, so the question is, uh, what was the question again? Uh, these are coming in pretty fast. Oh, what strategy would you use for restaurants? Easy. Uh, coupon, you get the restaurant to issue a coupon. Post that, free yeah. meal, blah, whatever, free. Look at McDonald's. Yeah, and Facebook now has a built-in coupon feature. Yep. yep. So that's, that's a good question. You can get restaurants to pay you to run their marketing yeah, campaigns. Yeah, hell yeah. Because no, very few restaurants are using no, it. Restaurants. You can come in and just be smart. Polo Paul said, take my money. Did you get in, Polo? Watch the thing. We'll, we'll announce as people get in the test group if we have time. What strategy would you use for a gym, Raymond Richardson? I, I keep neglecting Instagram. You guys got to put Instagram over on the side more. 39 people in a platoon. 39, 39 in a platoon? 
That's bigger yeah, than so what's, a, what's under, you have like a, how does it go? You have like a squad. What's a squad? It says one officer, 11 non-commissioned officers, yeah. 27 enlisted. That's soldiers, a squad, right? Three people. What's a squad? Go down the, I don't know why we're doing this, but is Facebook the best for real estate? There is no best. Like you want to diversify your marketing. Plus, marketing principles apply to all platforms. Yeah, once you get a good campaign, you run that thing on YouTube, Instagram, yeah. Snapchat, Facebook, Twitter. You understand Twitter. how to do it. Yeah. Um, so the answer is yes. It's great for real estate. In fact, if you don't use it for real yeah, estate, a ton of we have real estate crazy. clients. We Where are you guys at right now? Them. Well, this is Beverly Hills right here, Los Angeles. How would you market a travel booking website? I'd do something probably funny. You, when you got a subject that's boring, you got to make it interesting. Yeah. Some things are. Nine people in the squad. Yeah, squads like squad. nine. Okay. So, so between a good. squad and a platoon. Yeah. That's about the size of you'll be in a group in there. So yep. somebody said your vibe attracts your tribe. I see what you did there. I see that <laughs> rhyme. Ty, what is your opinion on Amazon, eBay reselling and such? Anthony Stephen Hamilton. I think you can make, I have some guys that are teaching people how to do eBay. They're killing it. But if you're not good at marketing, it doesn't work, Matter. you know? So if I was doing Am Amazon, especially, you got to do more video marketing, more video marketing. Even Amazon now allows video reviews of products. People watch video. I repeat, Bradley Dunn said he just joined. I don't know if you get, cool. you know, yeah, your alerts. Alex, yeah. Alex turned just turn alert. it on. <laughs> Welcome. We have Peter Mom, Selda. Peter Selda, mompreneur Marie Rose. She just put a question at Mark. Yeah, yeah. If you're asking, can you be a mom and an entrepreneur? Oh yeah. Yes. Some of the top. Look at Jessica Alba. Alba. She like got that billion like, dollar I was honest just company. Just talking about it earlier. Yeah. Turn your life into your business. Former Marine in your SMMA. A squad is two or more, and a platoon is forty-three. Cool. Ty, any reference for finding a mentor? That's what this alliance is about. You'll be there with people. It's the law of 33%. That's yeah. what my TEDx talk. You'll be with people who are way above you, people on your level, and people below you. And we mix it all together, and you'll yeah. all be interacting, mentoring, learning. So you'll be learning. Me and Alex will be in there popping in into the groups. Yeah, we're going to be setting up these live calls. Are these Zoom. So all you got to have is a yeah. phone. You can, you don't, if you don't have, if you live outside the US, you can just Zoom call in video you don't you can use the internet yeah so you don't have to make a phone call that'll be expensive so yep. as long as you have wireless it, as long we do you have it internet. different times during the week so we pick and choose groups yeah we'll pick a groups, time yeah. so you'll be like tuesday and it's just once a month so all you got to do is commit to an hour or two a month and all of a sudden you got insider secrets you start making more money your business goes up it doesn't fail like 99 percent of bit or 90 percent of businesses do and there's a Facebook group where you can interact with everyone else and, you know. Zahid afterwards. said, what's the difference between the 25K business builder and the 500 uh, and, the, and the monthly alliance? The 25 to $50,000 mastermind, people come and spend a year with me. They come in at six times a year. Um, so it's in person. So you can come and uh, you can apply for my mastermind. Um, but the, this alliance here... Um, yeah, it's less expensive too. So it's a good start. You can start in the Alliance and if it goes well, you can want to come in person. Yep. Somebody said they would swipe right on Ty. Is that a girl or a guy? <laughs> Not that it matters, I guess, but I was just wondering because the thumbnail, can't tell. Okay, I joined the SMA, it was a nice successful ride. Let's do it again, shall we? Wilson Hortado just got in the Alliance. Cool. Master Marketing Alliance. Master Marketing Master Alliance. Master Marketer Alliance. Master Marketer. Yeah. Master Marketer. Marketing. We want to make you into a marketer. Yep. Because one, it's not just one marketing campaign. Once you learn the skills, like if, I lo if me and Alex lost all our businesses now, some catastrophic thing, sometimes shit happens, you become, ba we got bankrupt. Uh, we declare bankruptcy, we have no money. Because we know how to market, we'd go out, we'd partner with somebody who has a product, say, give us 20% of the business, 50% of the profit, yep. or something like that, and we could start with no cash. Once you know how to market, I promise you this, if you are a master marketer, you will not be broke for the rest of your life. It's number one skill. 
Yes. In today's so number and, one. And how Jordan much? Engineer. How many classes are there in high school, junior Seriously. high? Seriously, not one. They yeah. they left out a so, complete subject. Because and, and persuasion and sales, I would put those right there with marketing. Yeah. So Jordan what would you do for a moving company? Again. Take boring companies and make them funny is a good thing. And then take funny companies and make them serious. That's kind of a good way. You, you, you basically juxtapose. Because one of the things, and we'll, I don't know if I have time to talk about this. I got to go because I got to wake up at 4 in the morning um, to fly out. Is I don't that, envy you, man. <laughs> yeah, I bought a farm on the East Coast. I got to go pick up a horse that I'm, I want to buy. It's gonna be a fifth horse. Horse. Fifth. She's yeah. a female. This one's a female and has a little baby, a little colt, a little filly. <laughs> That's unrelated to marketing. But we're working. We, I'm working on a food brand. We're working on. Yep. So me going to this ranch is uh, for a reason. Okay. So what's the number one rule in marketing? The number one rule of marketing is know the tw know the 25 co cognitive biases. <laughs> That's the number one. So it's 25 rules, but that concept of understanding human brain adaption, how it evolved, understanding the science. So let me just summarize this. S knowing the science of the human brain. Once you got that, remember, all your marketing is to humans because dogs don't watch YouTube or the Super Bowl commercials or anything, right? So it's all human. You don't have to learn, you don't have to be the dog whisperer. You gotta be the horse whisperer. I mean, the mm. human whisperer. Yep. Sorry, not the horse whisperer. It's getting late. You gotta be the human whisperer. And once you're the human whisperer, you can exchange different products. If you're a dentist, if you're doing teeth whitening, if you're selling a supplement, if you're selling a, a you know personal training kit, if you're telling, if you want to become a social media influencer, you want to get more followers, all that stuff. If you want your brand to be recognized, easy. Okay, all brains are the same in some ways. Exactly. Coincidentally, his username is Master Jedi. <laughs> <laughs> do or do not. That's do the best not. thing yoga ever said. There is no try. There is no try. Someone said they love studying psychology at UCSCI Oxnard. I hope you ain't getting too much in debt there. What's the best book for the 25 Cognitive Biases? There's different books. Um, Charlie Munger has one, but it's, he doesn't explain it much. That's where I got the idea from Charlie Munger, Warren Buffett's business partner, and then I started elaborating and kind of filling it in. So the, there's books by C. Aldini, like Influence, Persuasion. There's a book called uh, Noah, uh, Noah Berger or Jonah Berger. Is it Noah Berger? Jonah Berger Jonah. Um, wrote a book called Contagious. There's another book called Hooked by, what's Near his name? Yal. Near Yal. He's like you, Persian, isn't he? Aren't, it, Israeli. Is, oh, okay. I thought it was Persian. No. I let him pronounce all the Persian names because he speaks <laughs> <laughs> Farsi. Um, and uh, uh, what's, yeah, oh, another person asked the same question. Lauren Buffett, no. <laughs> Somebody said, Lauren Buffett, who's that? Warren Buffett. You may, if you have been ever <laughs> read the Warren Buffett. <laughs> I don't understand, I don't know, Ty's full of crap. There's no billionaire named Lauren Buffett. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking it up right now. <laughs> I'm gonna go on his live stream and find the live. What about the boring company that Elon Musk owns? Exactly. What did I just say? Elon Musk. So I've had some interesting one-on-one -on -one conversations with Elon Musk. Believe it or not, at one point, Elon Musk, I was at an event, and he asked me for advice on Snapchat for Tesla, and I gave him a 20-minute talk. Um, and it was just about how to market Tesla with Snap. But listen to me. Elon Musk is a master marketer. Mm -hmm. People think, oh, he's Batman. He's, he's technologist. Yeah. He ain't building the rocket ships. I mean, he does understand. He got a degree he in has engineering. He and all that, but, but it's marketing. There, he's a marketer. Marketing. And just as a, remember how I said you take boring ideas, literally boring ideas, and you make them fun? He took the boring company, which is going to dig holes in the earth. Nothing more. Bo and he made the name funny, boring company. And he sells flamethrowers as a publicity gig. That's fun. It's a lead magnet. Exactly. <laughs> Everyone knows the boring company because they're shooting. Yeah, people are going to set themselves on fire with that. So <laughs> don't sell. I don't recommend that Selling you should set flame up throwers. flamethrowers, but yeah. you can't I argue would, with his results. Yeah. How would you get away with liability of that? You just say that? if you buy, I don't know, he doesn't call them flamethrowers. They're called like 
seat warmers. I don't know what they are. <laughs> They're Skin over, warmers. Over, <laughs> oversized. So that would be funny if somebody's like, light. you got a light? A cigarette, <laughs> just turn on, boom. <laughs> That's where a lawsuit will happen. Someone's going to burn somebody's face off. What's the difference between a boring product and a product with value? I mean, look, a lot of products are boring, but they're necessary. Real estate's boring. You ever seen a real estate contract? When you buy something, it's like using 1800 pursuant to here for out thou, where for out there, Romeo, thou shalt own this house. It's not, a, it's, I never realized that till years ago. I had a mentor in real estate. He's like, real estate's good, but it's boring. But you, but it's made the most millionaires in history. By the way, yeah, that's what Elon does. He, the name of the flamethrower, it's this isn't a flamethrower. What is it? It's not a flamethrower. That's what he named it. Really? Not a flamethrower. Oh, it says wow. on the box. <laughs> so if anybody goes, I thought it was a flamethrower. Be like, the name is not a flamethrower. He's a dude. Elon Musk, more than anything, is a marketing genius. What's the best book to read for world history? Will Durant. Um, so I'm curious, do you have a, a favorite ancient philosopher who has influenced you? Or have you heard of Thomas Aquinas, what are you going to ask? Or Thomas who? Damn it, it's gone. Um, yeah, I don't know what you said. I lost it. My favorite philosopher, I mean, Plato, Socrates, Aristotle, you have a hard time going bad, although Aristotle is a little tough to read. All right, back to marketing. But by the way, you should study a little philosophy, a little Plato, Socrates, Aristotle, because that gives you, you learn about how the human brain works. You want to read off a few people who got in the yeah. alliance, and then I'm going to go. Cool. I'm going to go. Um, Bernadette said, ha ha, real estate contracts are boring. I'm a realtor. You're funny. Thank you. Anthony Fernandez, welcome to the Alliance. Does it say where they're from? Let's um, read off their location, if you, yeah. not their house address. But. Yeah. <laughs> see. I'm not go visit him. <laughs> I'm not capturing it. I'm not capturing oh, it. But so. he's in the U.S. Yeah, yeah U.S. You got to add that in the thing. It's, Reduces, increases friction. It doesn't. I've <laughs> tested it. Um, thoughts on a university marketing degree? I gave this. Not a big fan of it. Don't go to college for universe, for a marketing Marco degree. Torres, welcome to the Alliance. He's in the U.S. U.S., yes. Let me see. So we get it? Customer. No, you didn't get the... Yeah, can you see? Can Harjinder Singh, Singh in Australia. Australia. This is a cool thing. This is going to be a global group, so you're yeah, going to learn 100%. insider tips from other marketers. The only one rule is you got to give value. You can't just get in the group and eavesdrop on everybody else. At least once a month, you got to give a strategy and a tip. Yep. That's working for you. Yep. No bottom feeders. No. Everybody got to carry their weight. Now you don't have to share every business secret you have, but if you want other people sharing their secrets, then you share one secret. And if 12 people do that in your group, you're getting 12 badass secrets on Facebook ads, compliance, YouTube, Instagram, marketing hooks, cognitive biases, landing page optimization, split testing, pricing, all that stuff you're getting and you, you're getting it for basically a very low price yep. compared to, yes, CSUN, community college marketing degree for 40 trillion. Whatever you spend there is a dollar too much. <laughs> Think of it that way. Uh, Zahid uh, Tid, uh, Tilly uh, from Canada. Cool. We got people from yeah, all, over. all over the world. This is going to be an interesting, these are going to be interesting squads. And part of, people ask why we're doing this, partly because we're going to learn from you too. Yep. So it's going to be exchange. Like I said, we will kick out anybody and refund them their money if they're just sitting in there not giving any value. Yeah. So everybody, now if you're introverted and shy, you don't have to talk public speaking right. for 30 hours. But um, yeah, and marketing, a lot of it is, part of it is tactics. I mean, there's high level of strategy, there's sixth sense, like you mentioned, but there's also tactics, trends, what is happening, yes. what is working today. And that's a good segue for me to go to bed because I got to wake up at four in the morning and Alex is going to finish this because he can sleep in tomorrow. So he's, uh, so take it away, my friend. All right, man. Boom. All we right. need one of those LeBron Get handshakes. Your... We need one of those. You seen LeBron and like these dudes got some complex ones. Who has the most complex handshake? I think Russell, Russell Westbrook and, uh, 
I don't know who he, one of the guys was Russell. Zach, you should know this. Uh, I'm better with years and numbers. And <laughs> Zach, who won the Super Bowl in 88? We can do da, da, San Francisco da, da. 49ers. <laughs> 49ers. What year? I mean, what score? Against who? Against who? Cincinnati Bengals. Against the Bengals, Cincinnati. All right. What, what was the score? I think score? 26. 21. Zach got a photographic memory for the weirdest things. If you only had this for marketing, yeah, Zach, for you'd be a billionaire yeah, or stock marketing. picking. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll shift it. You know what? Yeah, you convinced Z- me. I'll start paying attention. To Zach this. only focuses on things that will not make him one penny. <laughs> He's like, I can tell you how LeBron James is getting rich. I know their shoe size. <laughs> Who won the NBA championship in 2018? Series. Not a good series. Sweep. Okay. Max Jesus said Ty went from zero dollars to ten thousand dollars a month with Ty's course. Thanks, my man. I'm glad to hear that, man. That makes my day. Uh, Max Jesus, if that's how you pronounce your name, you should contact my office. If you can prove your results, I'll invite you into my 300 group. That's separate. You can't you can't pay your way into the 300 group. You have to be invited based on results. Yeah. So okay, I'll, I'll let you take it away. All right. Cool. When are you going to come back? Ty. Uh, In a couple weeks. All right. Cool. All right, guys. Let's get started. So um, just briefly about the group. So we're going to basically, it's very simple. It's one of the things that I wish all the products that we build these days are the things that I wish I had when I was learning my stuff. You know? a systematic way to exchange ideas in a small group. So basically what we do is that people who get into alliance, we put them in a, into little groups. Uh, Zoom, the, the calls are live, done uh, on Zoom. So you get to interact with other people. People that are above you, we kind of mix. We're going to experiment a little bit with how to mix it better, but we also change people in groups. So over time, you get to learn from different people and also contribute back to the group. That's really the best way to learn marketing. Before I give you a few more tips on how to, uh, how, to, uh, how to improve the effectiveness of your marketing, let me ask if, answer a few questions. Zach, what, do I, what am I looking at here? The comments? Okay, got it. All right, so uh, how you advertise a potential news website without spending a lot. So news websites are especially so news websites, are especially if there's a lot of text on them, uh, especially if you pick the headline right, and if there's authority on the domain on Facebook, you, can, uh, uh, you get really good low CPCs. I mean, the algorithm is changing a little bit, but uh, even if you have a non-news product, like an actual product, one way to, pr- to promote it is to actually write a blog post about it and push it on Facebook, and then at the end of the blog post, uh, you can give away the product. Like a simple way, let's say I'm selling these sleep glasses, what I would do, I would write a blog post explaining like 10 techniques on how to improve your sleep. And then, you know, one of them is Blu-ray blocking glasses, and then I would recommend the product in there. Obviously, you have to say that you're affiliated with the product, but that's a good way to sell products online. Uh, Mayor, do you still use sales funnels? <laughs> Every day, my friends, all the time. So uh, online marketing is a lot. A lot of it is about understanding what happens. To the, there's high level of strategy and there's mechanics. Once you show an ad to a person, put yourself in their shoes. They land on a landing page. What is a sales pitch? What do they see? What do you expect them to do? Does your website reflect what they have to do? So yeah, that's what I call a sales funnel. How would you market a music school? That's actually, music school would be another easy one too, especially if, you, if the person has the ability to buy the product online or a cheaper version of the product online. So if for, for, it's like under $1,000 uh, online school, for example, perfect. Create videos uh, you know, with music in it, uh, videos that are disruptive, meaning I call them thumb stoppers. So as people are browsing through, um, uh, Instagram or Facebook, they see a video. It's a lot of times a video, especially on Instagram, is mute. So you have to use something that cues the user to actually tap on it to unmute the video and listen to music. 
those things are interesting. I've seen uh, quite a few good ads for music-related products. One of them, the karaoke app, which is an iPhone uh, store by uh, the company Smule. The head of marketing actually trained under me at Zeus. Uh, so they, it's, it's insane. They're very effective marketing because music and, in general, people like music. Things that people like are easier to market, in general. Now, solutions... Uh, like, you know, if you uh, also work, but things that entertainment is easy to market, easier to market. Let me put it this way. Uh, marketing for artworks, exactly the same. Artworks, music, they're all very visual or you can, it's like they're entertaining. So play the entertainment side, create videos under one minute so that they're Instagram qualified. These days, all videos that I create are exactly 59 seconds. I've done it so many times that even if I'm in the video, I'm doing a selfie, I know exactly when to stop. I just literally, I shoot a video that is 55 seconds to 59 seconds, and then uh, it becomes qualified for Instagram. So I shoot for 55 to 59 second videos for Instagram. Uh, let me see. Um, can you explain how it is owning a business? Well, solutions to drop shipping. I actually had a live call today um, about drop shipping specifically. So drop shipping is, is becoming really competitive for those of you who do drop shipping. Um, you only those guys who are really good at marketing are really making money these days. So uh, because I mean, obviously, when you have uh, an opportunity like an arbitrage opportunity like drop shipping, it won't last forever. So only people that are the best. Uh, are surviving in dropshipping. But at the same time, I see people that are making, you know, a million bucks a month in dropshipping. So you can win. How do I succeed with Facebook ads? How do you succeed with marketing has many levels. One of them that I always talk about, especially for Facebook ads, is what I call frameworks. Let me talk about that. So frameworks are kind of like templates. The best way to think about it, they're like templates. So you need to, um, advertising frameworks. So, one of, so the beauty of having frameworks is it, whenever you see a new marketing problem, it gives you a structure to work off of. One of the things that I see people do is just, you know, they sit at their computer and start building ads and, you know, launching them. And most of the time it doesn't work because they had no thought process before going into advertising. So I guess I'm going to spend a few minutes talking about frameworks because literally if you l develop like the simplest frameworks, it's kind of like taking a gun to a knife fight because you have frameworks other people don't and you just simply win. One of them that, I call, that is kind of interesting, I actually did a live call about this one today. It's called Scattershots. And this is when you just start marketing a product, which from the comments, I feel like a lot of you guys are in that position uh, where you are just starting a product, you want to learn how to market it, market it best. So that first stage, I use what I call scatter shots, and it has actually like literally two steps. It's super simple. Uh, identify variables or dimensions. Dimensions or dimensions to test. So an example of this would be you have a product, let's say sleep glasses right here. So you have sleep glasses, Blu-ray blocking sleep glasses. Oh, this is good. So uh, you, you want to know how to advertise this market. Well, you don't know who's the original buyer, what is the hook that gets them. So the first thing you do is you identify the variables so that you can narrow the targeting of your marketing. Are, it, are men more likely to buy it or women? Is it what age group, younger, middle age, older? Uh, what gets them to buy this, you know, is it, so most likely they have sleep problems, for example. Maybe you come up with a different thesis. Then step number two, so here a uh, variable or dimensions would be age, gen. This is a simple example. Obviously, I'm oversimplifying it. And then what I call a thesis. Like what is a thesis, right? So I have three dimensions here. Now I'm going to put this in three buckets. Let's say for age, I come up with three buckets, 18 to 35. 36 to 45 and 46 plus. So three buckets. 
gender, two genders. And then here, let's say I come up with two different hooks for the product. So hook one and two. What I do in the scatter shot, which is one of the things that if you guys start doing, thinking about marketing problems this way, you're gonna succeed a lot more. And really, these are the most important skills in terms of just succeeding in today's business. Number two, I think I basically create ads targeting every single one of these permutations. So right now we have three age buckets, two genders, and two hook. That would be three times two times two permutations. So that is 12 permutations. So you create 12 ad sets. I would use the exact same a creative or ad, I put them in every single one of these 12 ad sets and I would run it and I would see which one of them works best and then you find out that's how you find low hanging fruits in targeting. So all of you guys who ask me questions about, um, about, uh, about like how to market a particular product, simple. First create a scatter shot, put a single creative in it target 12 ad sets, see like, for example, it might be that middle-aged men are more who are interested in fashion, uh, are, you know, are fashionable people, are more likely to be, uh, to buy this particular pair of glasses. Once you have that, your marketing all of a sudden becomes a lot easier. So the goal of scatter shots is just one of the many frameworks I use, uh, and it's, one of the ones that I, uh, they're layer one, like the first thing that we use, is to figure out who would be the target audience for this product. What, Sam is laughing. I looked Should, I? Like, cool. <laughs> Should I keep talking like this? <laughs> so actually the thing I like about this is actually the color is amazing. So I'm gonna talk like this for a minute. Maybe it increases conversion rate. <laughs> so anyways. Um, <laughs> All right, let's see. Next trend is anti-plastics, I agree. Uh, I've seen quite a few products, it's an interesting niche. Now, they call it a split testing, no they don't, whatever is your name, Vic. Split testing is different than this. Um, split testing is, um, well, you, I mean technically you're split testing the targeting, but split testing, is when you're looking, you have two different variations of a landing page, and most of the time, you're not isolating a single variable. Here, I'm isolating a single variable, and I'm isolating it, and I'm dividing it into, a cross, uh, into three different dimensions. Remember, I said one, two, three, and th like three, two, two. So it's like, it's a multi-dimensional test, if you will. Um, Red glasses, nice, people liked it. I'm gonna put it on, maybe it increases views. All right, what other questions? Indonesia, all right, so um, what else do I, uh, do I wanna talk about? There's one other thing I wanted to talk about and hopefully it makes a little bit more of an advanced topic. What do you think is a good lead conversion ratio for a service company in Facebook? Um, if you're convert, this is an, this is a wide question. Uh, so the question is, what is a good conversion rate ratio on Facebook? I want to say, if it is under 0.1 percent, you're doing something wrong. Actually, in fact, you should change something. Like, either introduce a different, either reduce the price, change your hook, uh, hook or come up with a product that is cheaper priced than your original product and use that as your core product ahead of time. So let me explain a little bit what I mean by that. So let's say you're selling a product that is $20,000. Well, that's a hard one to sell, especially online and without a salesperson on the phone or in person, right? So what you do is, uh, let's say you want to sell 10 units of that product per month, and that's your main, uh, that's gonna be your business. What I do is I create another product, normally cheaper, and let's say this one is, um, I mean, $1,000. And I start selling this product online. Normally, like, you cannot sell online above one, uh, products that are 
over $1,000, they're harder to sell online, especially through advertising. So I always go for under $1,000. I sell a shit ton of these. And then let's say I sell 100 of these. And then if they have 10% conversion, you end up with 10% of people who take the higher level upsell. Why are you guys laughing? <laughs> I sell a shit ton of shit it. Shit ton of it. Yeah, of course. It's just, that's the whole goal of online marketing is to sell a lot of products. <laughs> are we starting Instagram? Okay, cool. How, uh, how do you increase email open rates? That's a great question. I have actually, so a lot of time we'll t uh, people will tell you to put, uh, to change subject line, and subject line is obviously super important, but I have a different tip, something that people don't tell you. So I did a test, I put a comma PhD at the end of my name when I was sending uh, emails, increase open rate by 30%. I tried sending it as a person, meaning my name, versus a brand, my name in parentheses, the brand, or just the brand, it increased uh, the, uh, the conversion quite a bit. I know a lot of companies send emails um, as a brand, that's a mistake. You should actually send it as a person, like have a spokesperson or a CEO or the founder uh, send the email as a person. And it can be like, you know, Alex Mayer, uh, mentor box via Alex Mayer or, uh, or Alex Mayer in parentheses, the brand mentor box or whatever. So send it as a person. Tip number one, something that most people won't tell you. It is insanely effective. Tip number two, if you have ways to build credibility, like if you are a doctor or if you have a certification, uh, or something that you can add at the end of your name. Just trust me, just try it. Put it at the end of it and it will increase your conversion. If you, you, know, if you don't have certifications or degrees, that's fine. But if you have anything, just put it at the end. You have an MBA, put it at the end. If you're an MD, MD put it at the end. Uh, if, you, if you're a lawyer, put a JD at the end. So it will increase the open rate of the email. All right, and, and you know, a lot of these, I'm getting into uh, nitty gritty of marketing, um, but I think a lot of people will benefit from these. These are things that most people don't talk about. But here's the thing, that last touch, like changing, knowing these little things is what actually make you a marketing master. And that's the whole reason you're here, right? Um, how can I target a hot seller or future trend? how to increase subscriptions to what products? Uh, if you can be a little bit more specific, I can give you better answers. Uh, personalize the email, make it less intimidating. Here's the thing. Um, I would, I, I have, I know what you're talking about, but most of the time open rate is not impacted by what you put in the email. So it is just a subject line. Even like people put like, you know, first name as a variable. They basically, when they're sending emails, they insert the first name. So the subject line would be Alex, da 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 da. It doesn't make that much of a difference. What I just told you, people are kind of desensitized to it, uh, but what I told you actually moves the needle. Um, all right, let's see. Somebody liked what I just said about emails. What's the current CPM on Facebook ads? If you are looking at the CPM, you're looking at it the wrong way. Honestly, I was uh, looking at, uh, for a marketing camp, uh, campaign for, for, um, for, for a Democratic candidate for the Congress. I was looking at uh, the, the proposal they got from a marketing agency and they were quoting them CPMs, like you know, back in the days of TV advertisement. Who cares about the CPM? It's all about CPA, cost per action or cost per acquisition. So uh, it's, it's, it's basically, it, it doesn't, you can be very targeted, very precise, and pay a lot to capture impressions and you can convert really well. So don't get confused by CPM, uh, CPMs that are high and low. In fact, it depends on a lot of things, how targeted, how, how precise, uh, it depends on whether the person has interacted with your pages before. Uh, it depends on where you're buying the CPMs, placement, a lot of factors. In general, uh, this is how I think about it. If your marketing budget is um, under 100K a month, all you, are, you care about is CPA, meaning cost per acquisition. How much does it cost you to to, for someone to purchase something. And you should always optimize to purchase 
or add to cart. I see no other reason why at low budgets you should do anything other than these. Above 100K, uh, you can also do EPC alternatively. That's earnings per click. It's a slightly different calculation, but the same thing. You divide earnings per click. Uh, but again, you optimize to purchase or add to cart. You can sometimes optimize to leads, but other than that, nothing. Budgets above 100K, then it is a little bit different. You can optimize through video views and then target people that actually view a video. You can do reach and frequency targeting uh, to increase brand awareness. I don't want to get too much into details, but knowing these things is what makes you a good marketer, really. So it's well, actually, I should say, one of many things that make you a good marketer. But I mean, if you don't know it, you won't be good marketers. Uh, what do you think about data privacy getting stricter and stricter? Um, well, I, <laughs> I, think, I think in general, um, it's it, the marketing, precise precision marketing is here to stay and it's only gonna get better. So yes, there are uh, hiccups. There are things that we are dealing with brand new trends and whenever there are new trends like, like this, there are also you know, things that are not done right and we need to regulate. But other than that, I mean, this is the future. Welcome to the future, so. All right. There's a lot of questions on Instagram about your favorite ad sequence. Oh, I don't see Instagram. Oh, sorry. Yeah. No, I, it is here. I just haven't been paying attention to it. Hey, Instagram, sorry about that. All right, so what is the question that I should answer? Did you see one? Well, there, uh, a lot of them were asking about your favorite ad sequence or okay. specifics about ad sequences. Okay, so um, a lot of times what I do is I'll tell you in a second. All right, so one of the things that I do, let me talk about another framework that maybe answers. I don't see the question, but I'm going to answer the question that I think the person asks. So a lot of times I, I think about it. So obviously you guys have heard the concept or have heard the concept of funnels before. So at the top of the funnel, you have cold traffic. Here, what I do is that I always have what I call a single ad that is really right here at the top, top of the funnel. This is my best converting ad. And I use that, normally it's a video, so that I can create a custom audience based on people that have watched, like let's say 50% of that video. And then the rest, and whoever has, who has watched the rest of 50% of the video is then in different, in this funnel, deeper in, and in different levels of engagement. Hopefully that makes sense. So I'll have one ad that is running at the top, and its entire job, you know, you've seen uh, uh, cyclists, they, uh, you know, they bike in formation. There's a person in the front that breaks the wind. So the ad in the front, literally in marketing for me, it breaks the wind. It introduces brand new people that have never heard about your product or service for the first time to the concept. And um, that's, I think that's the, one of the tips, one of those pro tips that I think if you guys want to be master marketers, you got to learn and master. Um, all right. All right, let me see. What other questions? Let me pay attention to Instagram for a second. Tell them I said thank you. All right. Um, all right, so any thoughts on psychological behavior of different platforms for advertising? Uh, yes, for sure. So people are actually in different states of minds when they're consuming different media. And also depends on the placement. So if it is you know, a pre-roll on YouTube, it is a completely different psychology than let's say a Facebook news feed and then stories in, on Instagram, for example, uh, have kind of like similar psychology at Facebook as, as YouTube. So here's a simple tip. Pretty much in all of these, you want to uh, create, a, create an ad that, that uh, disrupts a particular behavior. So if you're there, I call them thumb stopper for a reason, because you want to create, a, create an ad that right when you're scrolling through it, uh, it stops people. So there are, that's like the, the thing that is common across all of these, basically. Um, what else? 
seems to be so advanced that I'm confused. Yeah, I know. So the topics is one of the reasons actually we started this group is because we, we can create a lot of courses on marketing and we have uh, different levels, advanced, beginner, you know, all, uh, all the way in the middle. So the problem is that when we create these courses, you still, it's hard to absorb them. That's why we are creating, you know, this, uh, uh, our alliance because it allows you to actually be in a group and learn through what, what Ty calls osmosis, which is actually literally what it is, learning through osmosis. So we put people in small groups and we have, so imagine instead of me just talking to all of you guys and you guys just commenting in there, there was a small group with people that are more advanced or masters and then people that are in the, uh, in the middle and people who are beginners. And it was a small group of 12 people and every, I don't know how many people will show up, but we guess about seven people will show up to each session. So it's a small sh session, it's Zoom group, people, we can, you know, they can talk. Uh, it's basically Zoom is like video uh, uh, conferencing. And, you know, and you can learn from others. If you don't know something, you just go later and learn it. If you see other people are talking about it, you go and learn about it. Then in the next session, you can talk about it and ask questions if needed. Um, let me see. They're buying decisions on logic or emotions. Of course, so somebody asked, are people making buying decisions on logic or emotions? 100% on emotions. It's like, I have tried, I can tell you, I like especially when the on, online, in online marketing is easier because you can test. When you do something like TV advertising at the TV advertising, you are committing millions of dollars ahead of time. So you're kind of making a bet. And in those situations, I've been in a lot of situations where I had to make a bet. And every time I made a bet, and it was a logical sale versus a, an emotional sale, it just worked a lot better to play to emotions. You have to understand. You have to understand why a person would buy something. And you have to make your ad literally say the right thing to the right person for them to make a purchase decision. Purchase decisions are hard. So people are, do not easily purchase stuff. So you need to say the right thing to the right person at the right time and through the right medium even. So, uh, all right. So on Instagram, let me see. What's your take on different age targeting between platforms. So obviously there's age differences between platforms, um, but the way I think about it is like a scattershot method that I talked about ahead of time. That is designed so that you know who you're targeting. And then on each platform, even though like they're biased in one way or another, there are still young people using, I don't know, Facebook, and there are older people using Snapchat. It's just like the curve is a little bit skewed to the left or right. So what you do is you first understand who you're targeting, then you can reach your target audience on every single platform if you want to. It's just on some platforms you're more successful than others. But the key first thing is what you're selling, to whom you're selling, and how you're selling it, like what you're saying basically. All right, so what about influencers with marketing, does that help? Yes, hell yes. So there's this thing that we call uh, page authority or trust goes up if the person on the page or in the ad actually is somebody that you know. So it's just page authority is completely different if there's an influencer on the page. I've seen like triple to 10 times conversion increase with a familiar face and not without a familiar face. Uh, does it help? I, am an, uh, I have an online boutique and store uh, are the calls going to be run by some of your account managers? Yes, maybe I forget to mention this. Yes, so uh, is it from social media. Yes, so basically what we are doing, we have an, this is what I guess uh, the story of this product. So these calls are going to be run by our marketing experts uh, that we have in our agency. And uh, the reason we developed this product is we wanted not everybody can afford our marketing agency. So it's too expensive, it's for people that have an established business, and it's, just, it's not too expensive, it's just for most people, they cannot afford it. So they have to have an uh, established business to be able to hire us, but 
everybody can learn marketing and we want to be the person that be the people that help pe other people learn marketing because that's our passion. So uh, we're gonna have our people uh, run these groups. We're gonna actually control the composition of the group so that people learn from each other and contribute to each other too. They can share secrets, they can share uh, know-how with each other and then it's moderated and we we add value and we also have a monthly call webinar that is everybody gets to attend and that is like latest trends and techniques we do case studies so i mentioned the groups because that's a core product but there's also as bonus we also add uh uh, uh case studies where we go through specific alliance members um, uh, marketing problems and we basically solve it and everybody can benefit and chime in and benefit from it it's like basically what a business school should really be, but it's not. Okay, so let me see. How do you, how do you determine if you have maxed out the market share of a product? Haha, <laughs> that's an advanced question. I really like it. So I actually have a way of knowing and measuring how the maximum potential of a particular product will be. And what I do is that I target a product in a specific geographical location. I pick Louisville, Kentucky. Have you been to Louisville, Kentucky, Zach? No, but I want to, I've heard it's great. Yeah, so I target it like a small geographical location and I kind of bombard that ge uh, uh, geographical location with a particular product to see at what point it uh, saturates. And then I extrapolate to the rest of the US and the rest of the world. So, I mean, that's more of an advanced way of looking at it. Uh, a simpler way, if you're already running ads, is to look at what is called, so everybody knows ROI or return on investment, okay? So if you put 10 bucks in, you get 100 bucks, uh, that's your ROI. But if you, what, what most people don't understand is the marginal increase, the marginal increase uh, on return on investment per extra, extra dollar that you're getting, how much return you're getting. It's like uh, marginal return, basically. And you will get diminishing return as you scale your marketing. You will get it. Uh, to give you an, it's actually sort of like what I experienced in 2014 uh, at Zeus. I spent I, over $100 million. I don't know exactly. I can't remember the number. Maybe it might, it might have been close to $150 million, in fact, in online marketing. And I felt diminishing return. Basically, we were buying ads everywhere. And we got to a point where we were not getting the return on investment. Our top line was not going in proportion to the amount of marketing that we were spending. So the key here is you've put a dollar in, it's very simple. If you get a dollar in, when you start, maybe you put a dollar in and you get like five bucks back. As you scale it, for each extra dollar you put on top, you may get two dollars back. That's where I stop. So it's my rule is basically to never get to a situation where I'm getting a dollar in and I'm getting a dollar out. That's like, you know, why? <laughs> so. Uh, I basically stop at about here. My rule is out of every dollar of top line, I put 50 cents back into marketing and that's maximum. All right. Okay, and I think with that, should I wrap it up? Zach, what do you think? Whoops. Let me put the... We did three, four, five, yeah, six. we did scatter shot. Oh. We did uh, uh, my... Where is it? Scatter shot, we talked. Let me actually elaborate on this a little bit. I think that's the best use of my time. All right. Let me talk with my glasses on. <laughs> All right, so this is how, how it works. So basically, you run a single, I call it tip of the spear. This is the spear model. I barely talk about it. So tip of the spear, to me, is always a video ad. This is normally 55 to 59 seconds long. It's also normally my highest converting video ad, basically. Then what I do is I run this at about 30% of my total budget is a tip. So 30%, let's say 33, 
3% or one third of total budget is literally at the tip and it's just what introduces, constantly introduces new people to your products and you're running it regardless of ROI. You have to be, you have to have, if you want to increase your market share, you want to increase your, your sale, you need to have this tip going. Now what you do is, this is one of the frameworks, is you basically, then you create a custom audience of people that have watched, let's say 25% of this video. It's pretty simple. And that audience is obviously growing because you're pushing the tip forward every day. So every day more people see your ad, so the custom audience is growing. Then what I do is I layer stuff here. So I have uh, a bunch of ads. This is now multiple creatives. So at this point, I have multiple creatives. One of the things that I learned years ago, I want to say for the first five years that I was doing uh, marketing, I... I was always looking for that best creative, like as if like there is this golden thing that I need to ever, you do A, B test and you, A does better than B, you throw away B, B is trash. So I just focus on A. Mistake, different, that's a mistake. Different ads resonate with different people. Now some ads are horrible, they resonate with nobody, but so, and some ads are better, they resonate for, uh, with more people, but the truth is if you put three or four or five ads and run all of them at the same time, you're gonna capture more sales because different people resonate with different types of ads. So I do not, I disagree with the idea that there's one winning ad and you need to test and you just need to keep the, find the best one and kill everything else, I don't. I always keep like even the top 50%, it's just I spend less money on them. So. The best one always it becomes a tip, the one that actually gets one third of total budget minimum, and every day you spend money on it regardless. And then the rest of them you just layer at the bottom. You say they're retargeting, you mix them. I have this other framework where I put them all into one ad set and have Facebook engine decide which one they want to pick that day. Because sometimes image ads are better than video ads, sometimes video ads are better than image ads. I, mean, I don't want to get too technical, but Basically what happens is that there's a mixed bag of ads sitting behind the tip. So there's one winning superstar at, at the beginning. It has guaranteed budget. And one third of the total budget every day goes to that. And then there's like a mixed bag of ads and you just you know, let, let people resonate with different ads in your portfolio. So hopefully that made sense. So we talked about my spear model, Zach. We talked about... Um, um, the, uh, the, the frameworks, we talked about diminishing return and my rule of thumb. I wanna talk about one more thing before we wrap this up. In the meantime, the link is, let me put the link here one more time. I don't wanna find it one more time. <laughs> it's okay, there are so many of them. That's actually one of the reasons that we started this again is um, it's just, you know, it's not like it's five things and you learn them and you're good. No, there are a lot of things and different things are applicable at different times and also they change over time. So the only way to stay on top of everything and just learn continuously is uh, to, is to um, you know, be in a group and constantly learn from people. Super simple. Okay. Maybe a few more people that joined if there's... Yeah. Yeah, tylopez.com slash alliance is the link to repeat. We're gonna basically, it's a, it's a subscription. You're gonna join an alliance, you can cancel anytime. Uh, when you join the alliance, uh, this is Master Marketer Alliance is what we're gonna call them. You're gonna get a card. Uh, you're gonna, uh, it has a bunch of benefits, but the main product is basically you uh, become, you are eligible to participate in our small group sessions where we do via Zoom call. Uh, you get to work with other people, including our marketing uh, experts in the small groups, working on your specific marketing problems and talk about share ideas, uh, have people brainstorm on the ideas and all that. So, uh, and on top of that, there's a monthly webinar that we talk about the latest, those are all bonuses. Now, one, one last tip I wanna leave you with, and I know this is, um, not everybody in the marketing world actually agrees with me, but this is what I've observed. Um, about 
people like you know people talk about you know is creative the more the most important thing or the landing page or targeting I think actually none of these matter uh, people talk about oh like my I'm gonna optimize optimize my landing page I'm gonna optimize my, I'm gonna test all of these and make sure they're actually optimal each one individually and I mean not that it doesn't matter it doesn't matter as much as a lot of times you think it does what matters is literally the underlying desire the reason the hook the reason that people are buying something the reason that they're intrigued in your message in the first place and here's a simple tip if you have a hook that works if you have that hook repeat it over and over again it's like put it in your Facebook headline. Repeat the same thing. I, I, I was on a conference call the other day and somebody was saying change it a little bit from here. I'm like, no. If you have a hook that works, literally word for word, copy it, put it in Facebook headline, put it as what I call anchor or top of the page, top of landing page. When you send an email, like the first email you send, put it if they have, you know, if the, there's a shopping cart email, for example, abundant email, you just literally copy paste, literally copy paste. Half of marketing almost is finding the a hook that works. The other half is just repeating it and delivering it in different places. And when you do that, stay true to the hook of the, of the product as much as you can. So, that uh, somebody says, Zach, come on, don't be shy. <laughs> uh, Alex, do you look at ROI with cash on cash profit or percentage of the money markup? Doesn't matter. Like this is one of those little technical things. If you have $500 product, but you sell it with a plan, 697 pay, do you recommend to break even for the first payment? Thank you for your value, yes. That's fine. As long as you break even on the first payment, you're okay. So if you have six uh, $97 pays, yeah, that, that's a good target to have. A lot of times I tell people, I see people that freak out even though they're breaking even on the same day. I'm like, listen, trust me, there's a lot more value at the tail of this. I, I, minimum three. So unless you're really bad, like at marketing and lifetime value optimization, you can at least triple lifetime value so if you have you put a dollar in a dollar comes back at you same day then you have two dollars waiting for you later so you know it's a very profitable investment bring back glasses <laughs> here we go do you run the same ads on facebook as um, instagram yes i do it's the it's not necessarily what people should do uh but I do. Ty doesn't do that, right? His videos are long, so they're not Instagram qualified. But I always run. So here's the reason for it. It actually aggregates. Uh, I really like Instagram uh, in general. It's a growing platform, and I like optimizing my ads towards four Instagram platform these days, believe it or not, more than Facebook even. What else, Zach? What, what is the best hook for a debt collection company? <laughs> yeah, how would you get a hook? Dead or alive, I'll collect my money. No, that's not a good one. Basically, it depends on who you're selling it to. So your target would be, um, if you have a debt collection company you're advertising for, it, your target are uh, lenders, not borrowers. So lenders want to hire you to collect their debt, obviously. So for lenders, I think peace of mind is would be a good hook. I don't know what's the exact hook, but it should be around the concept of peace of mind. What else, Zach? I think- Now it's just a lot of comments. Okay. <laughs> All right. Cool. Yes. Um, what is the metric used to measure a successful Instagram ad? A CPA. Guys, I, it's, it's funny how people are thinking, are overthinking marketing a lot of times. Like I said, if unless you're, Total marketing budget is uh, over 100K a month minimum. If, so if it's under, 
your only concern should be your return on investment, return on ad spend, uh, if you're familiar with the Facebook language on that, or, um, uh, uh, or uh, basically CPA. How much I always say, optimize to purchase, if that doesn't work because you're not getting that many purchases. So the downside of optimizing to purchase is because sometimes uh, websites or mark, uh, ad sets aren't selling, aren't generating enough purchases for the marketing engines for Facebook or Google auction system to actually optimize, for their algo to optimize. So uh, what you do in that scenario is you change the target to objective to add to cart. So that gives the algo more data points. We're calling it Dr. Hook. <laughs> Dr. Hook. <laughs> I need to I need to lose it, cut my arm and have a hook. That would be like totally Dr. Hook. <laughs> All right. Is website necessary for selling a product? Do I really need to answer this, Zach? <laughs> what year <laughs> what year do we live in? What about <laughs> yes. I think they should sell their products through newspaper. <laughs> <laughs> on bench, bus, on bench. bus stop, bus yeah. <laughs> and I have nothing against, you know, uh, at, they call it at-home advertising. I have nothing against billboards or all that, but, you know, it's, <laughs> even then you need a website. What are you going to tell people on your bus stop bench, Zach? <laughs> uh, get today's newspaper or newspaper, I don't know. Yeah. Call this number. That's, I yeah. guess, the next one. So call this number to order your product. Then you say, well, uh, you, they buy online. Where do they check the status? I mean, come on. I don't need really. I shouldn't be wasting money, <laughs> wasting time on that question. <laughs> I gave it 30 seconds. I'm going to invest in Instagram ads. Yes, please uh, play with Instagram. Um, join our alliance. You will see that a lot of successful good marketers these days are using Instagram as an advertising platform. It's becoming really, really powerful. So pay attention to it. Snapchat advertising, I want to try this weekend. Snapchat advertising is not bad. I've tried it. Um, it's, uh, I prefer Instagram and Facebook to Snapchat. You're advertising on, I have a baseball game, mm -hmm. a video game on my phone. Mm -hmm. And all I do is just sit there and swing at the ball. And in yeah. between uh, games, this, you see my ads? Box yeah. Up. So either that's, it, that's either audience network or. Um, we use one of these retargeting uh, 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 networks called AdRoll. I'm everywhere. You are in my, you know, in that my tip of the spear, you're in the middle of it, Zach. Oh, I am? Yeah, I mean, nice. if you see my ads all the time, yes. Yeah. <laughs> all right, when it comes to... Uh, so if you are not getting purchases, so somebody asked if they're not getting purchases, what do they do? Switch your objective to add to cart. So this is like a simple technique. Never do optimize for clicks. Basically, when you optimize for clicks on Google or Facebook, they give you people that are very likely to click on ads, but they, they do, you don't get a lot of people that click and buy because they're already you know, they've already, uh, the, the impression is captured by someone else that is targeting towards purchase. So when you optimize towards link click, you're actually getting inferior traffic. I know it feels good to get a, a lot of trick, a lot of clicks, but a lot of times it doesn't convert. In fact, I tell you this, video views and impressions and reach frequency, I can make that work. Uh, purchase and lead, I can make it work, but you know, um, clicks, almost never work. And I've done a lot of advertising and I see a lot of others work. Wow, when you put this on for a little bit and then you take it off, the world is a different color. All right. All right, between, difference between Alliance and Alex Engine. A massive difference, they're not even related. Alex Engine is a marketing education product. Uh, Alex Engine is a, basically my creation, my way of uh, packaging the, the information so that you guys can learn. Uh, and go to alexengine.com and check it out. It's a great product. I'm very proud of it. It's like basically my legacy, what I'm going to leave to this world. But uh, the marketing alliance, but that's learning. This is, 
about being part of a network where you can learn through osmosis. This is for people that have some basic understanding of marketing or they want to go to the next level. So you come out, I would say, buy both. They're two completely different products. How to get a question answered on your live call by putting it in comments. <laughs> All right, what else? Zach, have you seen that, um, that ad of mine that where my dog is in the background? Uh, have you seen my dog? In? Seen so uh, here's a funny thing. Um, so I was, I was shooting one of my ads and my dog walked in the background, like started sniffing stuff and just like in the background. That ad is killing it. So it's, in, it it's, it's yeah, and it's like, and it's kind of people are like, hey, there, there, there's a dog. <laughs> so it's funny how much background of an ad actually. So I'm trying, if you see my ads, now I try different backgrounds. I try to put myself in different, completely different situations. I'm stealing that idea. Yeah, all the time. Just think about your background. It's not only what you say, it's also visually is because a lot of times people don't even listen to you because they, they have to tap on the video. So you have to make them, mm. yeah. Uh, is this program ap appropriate for complete beginners? 100% yes. We will match you accordingly. So some groups are gonna be more educational, some groups are gonna be more advanced. Somebody follows me on Instagram, thank you. Uh, interest market for swimming suits. Um, for swimming suits, I would target brands. So if you have a swimming suit brand or products, uh, target other brands. I don't know what swimming suit, suit brands are. Do you know any? Zach, do you know any swimming suit brands? Yeah. Just Ty Lopez's. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. So you, we need to target. I think interest targeting works really well on that. Would you rather read business books or magazines like Entrepreneur and Forbes? Um, I mean, this is most things I call them false choices in life. It's like, I think it's a false choice. I mean, you should be reading everything. I don't pick, I try to diversify uh, the ways I get information, including by hanging out with the right people, reading the right stuff, watching the right videos. Taking classes. I take classes myself all the time. Trust me. Everybody puts a class out there, I buy. So it's just, it's always worth the money. You don't expect miracles from a single source. So you, you expect it from like a diverse stuff. And then some things work, some things don't. Some are asking for your Instagram. Uh, at Dr. Alex. Doctor spelled out. What type of audience you target while doing marketing for MentorBox? I literally target the entire planet. Could you not? Above 18, my target audience is about 1.5 billion people. So, but I slice it. Like I talk about it, there's a marketing framework. Some of you guys that know me, they've heard me talk about it. It's called Pizza Method. I literally slice it. And everybody gets some budget allocation. Now it may not be that much, uh, but they will get. So 18 plus anybody on the planet Earth they fit somewhere in my targeting uh, ad sets. So, but there are obviously, I spend more time, more, uh, more budget on people that inter are interested in books, for example. So that would be an interest group, group that gets more budget per uh, size of the audience than anywhere else. Okay, top rated courses you enroll in, there are a ton of them. I don't even know where to start. One of my favorite book is actually Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, Stephen Covey. We covered in Mentor Box, by the way. Unfortunately, Stephen Covey is not alive, so uh, I did the video for that book myself. The, the other book that I really like is Persuasion by Robert Cialdini. He's the father of the, one of the most cited psychologists of our time. If you want to learn sales and persuasion, read that book. He did the video for his book himself. He's alive, so. Okay. Uh, somebody gets a ton of my ads. <laughs> uh, uh, somebody asks, if you run an ad, it's profitable, then you duplicate it or you increase the budget. Um, so 
a little bit, I mean, I, I, I'm, I, can, I can answer that a specific question, but let me uh, uh, say something a little bit more philosophical. Marketing or running marketing is a little bit like driving an old car in the country road. So you're driving and the car breaks down, right? And you get out of the car and you're, you're you know, you don't know what to do and there's nobody around. So you have to find a way to make the car work. So you kick the tires, I don't know, put some water in it, I don't know, whatever you need to do. And you get the car to start again and then you start driving and it's all happy and good and then it breaks down again and you get out and this time you have to do something different. The same thing that you did last time doesn't work. You have to, but you have to find a way. You just kick it in different ways to make it work. Marketing is like that. So. You're driving, your ads are profitable, and then all of a sudden they stop working. Or you try to increase the scale, it, it, st it stops working. You try duplicating. Sometimes duplicating works better than increasing budget. Sometimes increasing budget works better than duplicating. So you have to try them all. In fact, I tell you, a lot of times the algo underlying algo changes. Therefore, the strategy of you know, two months ago doesn't work today. And that's what you did two months ago to fix that situation doesn't work today. So right now, as of this moment, what I do most of the time is duplicating. But there was a time where increasing budgets was more effective. And I'm sure there will be another time where something else will be more effective. So the answer is just no. Those things are very tact uh, tactical and a lot of times are time dependent. So try them all. See which one works, basically, is the answer. And you know, one of the advantages of you know, I'm obviously marketing my own product, but one of the advantages of joining our alliance is that you can, instead of trying, then you can get ideas from other people that are of things that are working today. Uh, social media promotional software out there. One of the things, one of the products that I really like is actually, I'm not affiliated, Ad Espresso is a really good product. Um, yes, impactful book, persuasion. Yes, persuasion, maybe I said, Persuasion, it's called Persuasion. It's a great book by Robert Cialdini. It's, it's called one of the most important books in the science of persuasion in the past decade. So is our budget is over 100K on Instagram ads. Should we solely focus on CPA as a metric? No, if you're over 100K, then it's different. So uh, then you have a mix of CPA, ROI driven ads, and then you can afford maybe 20%, 30% of your budget goes into brand awareness. Then you can do reach and frequency. So I would do reach, if you have 100K plus, do reach and frequency. Uh, so get, basically try to get people, huh? Yeah, I'm almost done though. <laughs> I'm just answering questions right now. I'm almost done. You want me to done to fit, wrap it up? <laughs> I don't know. It's how long has it been? 141. 141. And there are tons of uh, questions. So, but anyways, uh, let me answer that question. Yeah. <laughs> what time are you waking up? He's waking up in a few hours. So, anyways, um, uh, I forgot the question. What was the question? Yeah, if it is over 100K, do reach and frequency. I got to go to bed too at some point. All right, so anyways, for those of you who are not in the alliance, um, I think it is, and if you want to be a ma master market, again, I, I tell you guys this, I'm an engineer, so I get to, see th to say this. Um, it used to be that engineering was the most important topic or skill to have, and not that long ago, 10 years ago, even five, six years ago. Um, you know, but marketing is by far more important now. It's almost singularly, you know, uh, the most important skill, I believe, that you have to develop in the modern world to succeed in business. So, um, yeah, so, and the best way to learn marketing is to learn from the masters. Anyways, with that, I'm going to wrap up this call. Uh, this has been quite a bit. All right. Somebody wants to sell as a dentist to grow your dental business other than ads. All right, guys. I think I'm going to wrap it up. This was fun. <laughs> the video crew look tired behind the camera. <laughs> it's midnight. All right. Cool. Uh, go to tylopez.com or um, um, 
or mastermarketeralliance.com. So master marketer, www.mastermarketeralliance.com. Uh, we have an offer. We're going to close it because we're going to kind of expand. This is a lot of li- manual work involved. Uh, my team has to go and pick, put people in groups and conduct the live calls. Join before we close it. And with that, I'm going to wrap it up. Thank you guys for watching. Bye. <clears throat>